Each stage of knowledge is characterized by a different way of understanding the world. In his four stages, it consists of schemas, assimilation, and accommodation. In this stage, intelligence is gained by combining sensory and motor skills from ages zero to two years old. Here's Bruce, he's six months old. Bruce still enjoys a game of peekaboo. This is because he hasn't developed object permanence. In his mind, mommy disappeared behind her hands, yet soon reappeared. Here's Rebecca, she's two years old. As you can see from the previous video, Rebecca has developed object permanence because she knows an object exists when it's out of sight, like the ball. This is important because babies need image representation to help prepare their bodies to learn. In this stage, children begin to engage in symbolic play and learn to manipulate symbols. Some key factors in this stage are centration, egocentrism, parallel play, and animism. Here's Avery. She's three years old. With Avery, I focused on centration. longer than the row of seven yellow blocks. Here's Mark. He's five years old. I performed the same centration block test on Mark. Which row has more blocks in it? The yellow? He passed, proving that he can focus on length and number at the same time. Animism. This is the belief that inanimate objects, such as toys, dolls, stuffed animals, have human feelings and intentions. Take this video of Avery with the baby doll, for instance. Do you think if I pinched her, it would hurt her? Do you think so? Do you think that would make her cry? Can you put her in her high chair? Another key point to the pre-operational stage is egocentrism. Egocentrism refers to the child's inability to see a situation from another person's point of view. Like Piaget, I used the Three Mountain Task to test whether children had egocentric thinking. Here is Mark at five years old and Avery at three, taking the Three Mountain Task. On that side of the mountains, what do you see in the grass? What do you see on this side? A truck? What do you think I can see on this side? What's that? A, ch a chicken? What else is over there? There's one more thing. A tree. Yeah. A Okay. What do you see on this side? Jamie sees on 
first side. Some chicken, anything else? You can't peek, no peeking, no peeking. Now what else, what do you think I'm looking at? No peeking. Although Mark and Avery both passed this task, can we say this is a valid reason, not just based on their environment, age, schooling? This is stage three. This stage is characterized by the development of organized and rational thinking. A key component in this stage is conservation. This is Kate. She's seven years old. This is Lee. He's nine years old. Would you say that these have the same amount of juice in them? Yeah. Okay. Now would you say that they still have the same amount of juice, or would you say that this one has more, or this one has more? They both have the same. Why? It's because they used to be in that cup, but you pour it in that cup, and when you did that cup, it was the same as that one. If you pour it in there. Good same. job. And now it's way thinner. You are so smart. <laughs> Would you say the amount of liquid in these two cups are about the same or different? I would say they're about the same. Yeah. Okay. Would you say that this one has more or this one has same. more? Same. Same? Yeah. Okay. I already learned about that. Though. You did? Yeah. Although Mark is not in the concrete operational stage, I decided to test him on conservation. Are these the same or different? Same. The same? <laughs> now which one has more water in it? That one? Okay. Good job, buddy. Even though this glass is bigger, it's skinnier, but it's still the same amount of water. Yeah? Okay. Alright, well what about now? Who has more Play-Doh? Me or you? Me. You do? <laughs> are you sure? Okay. Good job. Another key point of the concrete operational stage is classification. This is where we are able to group objects and dimensions that they share. Okay, Kate, there's some objects here. Okay, I want you to sort them out based on their similarities. Do you know what a similarity is? Yes. So this is one group, yeah, and then this is one group? Yeah, they're all cylinders and these are all like basic, basically rectangles. <laughs> awesome. So why'd you put all these together? Because you're cylinders. Since you're all uh, rectangular prisms. Good job, buddy. Alright, that's it. You're done. <laughs> Although Lee and Kate succeeded with flying colors, I wondered what it would be like to test them in the second stage with animism. Do you think if I pinched her cheeks, she would cry out loud? Yeah. You do? No, no. Do you think that she would like lie a little bit and cry? Do you think if I said? Get out of here, baby. That it would hurt her feelings? Yeah. yeah, you think so? Do you think she gets hungry? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. You want to hold her? Kate still shows signs of the pre operational stage when dealing with this key point. However, Lee passed. You like my baby? <laughs> or, no, 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 she's fake. Oh, she is fake. So if I. Pinch her really hard if I'm mad at her. You think she'll cry? No. You think it'll hurt her feelings? No. 
Swing fight towards. Get out of here, baby. You ugly. Swing fight on her in her feelings? No, she's a toy. So she doesn't have any feelings? Yeah, like a fish. <laughs> like a fish? <laughs> Do you think if I yelled at him and was really mean to him, that would hurt his feelings? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah? Do you think if we pet him and love on him, it makes him happy? I think so. Why do you think that? Because he's a living thing. Very good. <laughs> living. Boy, flower. What if I pinched his nose really hard? Think he would. He would have feelings. You think that would hurt his feelings? Yeah. Some stuff that I can do to make him happy, like what? Give him a treat. Um, some wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, and why? Back. Why does he have feelings? Because he's an animal and he lives. This is the final stage of Piaget's theory. This is where adolescents can apply logical thought to abstract problems. This includes hypothetical deductive reasoning, the scientific method, and philosophy. This is Chloe, she's 14 years old. Here, Chloe focuses on a problem that requires her to use inductive and deductive reasoning. Suppose your portable music device fails to switch on. Uh, my hypothesis is if it doesn't turn on, then it's probably dead and you need to plug it back in. My logic behind this is that if it's dead, then it can't turn off and it needs to be plugged in. My prediction is that when it's plugged in, it will turn back on, and if it doesn't, then something else is wrong with it. And the experiment is, after plugging it in, if it still doesn't turn on, then something else is wrong with it. Here I asked Chloe a set of hypothetical questions. What do you think it would be like if people were born with no thumbs? Uh, it would be a lot harder to like grab things and do stuff because you couldn't really function without your thumbs, it would just be poor, awkward. What do you think that, what do you think that would do to the world? Uh, we would probably be a lot less advanced as a society and stuff, because we wouldn't have all of the advancements that we have, and we wouldn't be able to do as many things. If you had a third eye, where would you put it on your body and why? Uh, I would put it on my hand somewhere around my hand because then I could just kind of point it anywhere I wanted and see anywhere. If people could breathe underwater, what do you think the world would be like? Uh, there would be a lot more humans because like, they could live in a lot more places than just on land. For research purposes, I asked the same questions to different children in different stages. What do you think it would be like if people had no thumbs? They, they would break it off. <laughs> okay. What do you think it would be like if we had no thumbs? Then you would... Then the whole world wouldn't have thumbs. Yeah? And what else? That's it? You can do more questions if you want. What do you think it would be like if we had no thumbs? Very hard to pick up stuff. Yeah? Because one time I watched the see it's no thumbs challenge and they had to duct tape the thumbs and it was really hard to do things. So. Yeah, that makes sense. What do you think it would be like if we had no thumbs? It would be harder to pick up stuff and you wouldn't be as talented. Like, let's say, for example, in base in baseball, you may you can't um, hit the balls well. And and in in writing, your handwriting might need might not be as neat. Is that it? Yeah. What do you think the world would be like if we could breathe underwater? Um, uh, with the sunshine. With the sunshine? Uh-huh. Okay, Marky. What do you think the world would be like if people could breathe underwater? I don't know. 
You don't know? Okay, Kate, what do you think the world would be like if people could breathe underwater? Cool? Yeah? I think it would be kind of cool because... What do you think the world would be like if humans could breathe underwater? There would be cities and stuff underwater. <laughs> if you could have one more eye, where would you put it on your body? Um, on my belly button. Why on your belly button? Because that's how um, I both do it. If you could have one more eye, one, two, and then one more eye. Where would you put it on your body? On your nose? No, I mean up here. <laughs> on your forehead? Why? Because that's, that's how monsters have it. Okay. If you could have a third eye, where would you put it? On my forehead. Why? Because I feel like that's just a good place to put it. Yeah? If you could have a third eye, where would you put it? You could put it anywhere on your body. Where would you Back put it? Back of the head. Why? So, just in case. So, there's a kid at school. He tries to scare me, like, when I'm not looking. So, if he tries to scare me, I'll just turn around and say, boo, he would cry to his mom. <laughs> As you can see, some of them were developed more in the formal operation stage, while others were not. Okay, you ready? Okay. You're not gonna drink this, okay? So cute. Hold on, not yet. We'll say go, okay? Oh, very good. I know. <laughs> good job, buddy. I know that. You are advanced. I'm too good at that. <laughs> Yeah, they're great. They are like super high strung, which I'm saying, which I do. Do I look just okay? Excited. Do I look okay? Do I look okay? What do you see on this side? An Armenian in a truck. Yeah, they are. And they breathe. Don't look at me, Chloe. <laughs> Cut. Don't. Is that it? Chloe.